All righty. I'll check the sound here. And we will get started. Let's ride. Like the name, that's nice. All right, I'm just gonna check the audio, make sure everyone can hear me and we'll get started with this, this unboxing. Okay, I think we're good. All right, uh, so if you haven't seen my channel before, Ryan from e Bike Escape, and I like to do these unboxing videos because I have to assemble these bikes anyway, so it's a great opportunity for anyone to ask me questions about really any electric bike. Happy to help you out if you're looking to make a purchase. Uh, speaking of making a purchase, if you are planning to buy a Hemiway electric bike, be sure to check out the link in the description. If you just click that link before you make your purchase, it helps support e-bike escape though. So thank you uh, in advance for that. Get the camera a little bit closer here. All right. So I am going to cut the box open here and this kind of, this box kind of took a bit of a beating actually. And you can see there's a pretty big hole right here. And then on this side, you can't see it, but it's completely kind of ripped open on this side. So while I don't necessarily recommend you cut your box open, for instance, in case you need to ship it back, uh, that is definitely what I'm gonna be doing with this bike. I will just kind of pop this open to make sure that I'm not gonna be cutting anything important here. Likely not, but yeah, this looks like some foam here. And this is the Hemiway Zebra. If I'm not mistaken, this model was announced with the rest of their new models late 2021. Hemiway, obviously known for their fat tire electric bikes. And I'm kind of curious to check this model out. This is the step through, as I mentioned. When I got mine, the box was trashed out, but the bike had no issues. Good to know. Hello there, I was actually going to buy this bike, but I decided to go with the Juiced Bikes Rip Racer. Nice, that's a great bike. Review that one, it's actually been a pretty popular review. I believe. And I'm gonna just grab one tool quick. Gotta have my ratchet wrench from Top Peak. And as with most electric bikes, you have to cut lots of zip ties. So highly recommend some side snips here. And we'll just start clipping away. Now the bike is uh, more of a gray-ish color for the high step. And then the step through, as you can see, is offered in white. Fat tire bike, 48 volt, 20 amp hour capacity, which is certainly uh, above average. Let's see if I can get the bike to stand, stay still. I think the handlebars are kind of twisted here. I want to open this Hemiway box here. 20 amp hour, that's a lot of battery, yeah. It's uh, so average I view is around 14 amp hours. And twenty is definitely on the high end. This bike is currently priced at two thousand dollars. All right, let's see what we get. We get a Hemiway hat. As you can see here. And we get a little multi-tool, seen this multi-tool many times in the past. All right, we have the Zebra step-through owner's manual and the quick release lever for the front wheel, a derailleur guard, pedals, looks like the Welgo pedals that we see on many electric bikes. And we have the front light, 
kind of a dual light, dual uh, bulb light, I guess, dual LED. Uh, bracket, I'm assuming that's going to be for the light and a charger here. Let's see what charger they give you. Hemiway branded. I'm guessing it's a two amp charger. That's what most of these are. It does say output is 2.8 amps. So, all right. So that's in that box. Cutting the zip ties here. I'm debating buying a Chinese battery or another official one from Electric. Interesting. I actually wasn't aware if um, there were other batteries that you could purchase for the electric bikes. I feel like the electric ones are not too terribly expensive. I want to say $350 for the XP 2.0 and $250 for the light. Uh, so it doesn't seem too, too high. I've commuted to work on it almost every day for a month. Super awesome bike. Heavy though. Awesome. Good to hear your feedback. Yeah, most, I mean, with the 20 amp hour battery, it's going to be very, uh, very heavy. They claim this bike can go 70 miles. You know, that's certainly possible. The fat tires are going to certainly reduce your range a little bit. I personally have gone about 50 miles on a 14 amp hour battery in a pretty low pedal assist level trying to uh, conserve battery. So 70 might be a little high uh, as far as an average, but maybe if you're in pedal assist one and uh, really conserving the, uh, the battery. All right, we have fender here, plastic fender. Nothing wrong with plastic fenders. That's for the front wheel. All right, I'm trying to get this uh, other wheel detached here. Probably try to get this review out fairly, fairly soon. Got some other bikes that I'm waiting for some parts for. The Rattan. And we'll have the KBO Ranger review out as soon as we get the rest of the accessories for that bike. Right, there's the massive 26 by 4 inch tire. If you've never seen one of these fat tire bikes in person, they are definitely a lot larger, um, you know, than you would uh, expect if you, if you haven't seen one in person, that is. So opted for the step through in this instance, because I think they're very accessible. And then I can talk about height ranges. Just keep in mind from my perspective, step throughs are not girls' bikes. What I always like to say is you should get the bike that you're going to ride the most. And if that is a step through, uh, then you should get the step through. All right. Let's see. Oh, Jordan sent $5. Thank you so much. I love your content. I ended up buying Electric XP 2.0 when I was looking between that and a Rad Runner. And your reviews pushed me towards the XP. Awesome. Super glad I could help. And, uh, Appreciate the five bucks. That's super generous of you. Uh, Ron, Ronza, 60-ish miles roughly in my experience in low pedal assist. All right, good to know. Someone giving us some range estimates with the 20 amp hour battery. What do you do with all the bikes after you're done reviewing them? Um, it's funny. It's, not, it's a question that I've received a, a few times. And so with some of the models, with some of the more popular models, what we end up doing is we just kind of throw them in storage temporarily um, because those are bikes that we might want for comparison purposes. I know we haven't done a comparison video in a while, and that's really just because we've been really busy with just having so many reviews. And so we want to try out some other types of video formats. So we keep some of the more popular ones and then some of the bikes of maybe brands that are still establishing themselves, or, you know, we obviously look at which ones people are most interested in. 
uh, I do sell uh, here locally um, to folks and give them a bit of a deal on a bike. And it's nice because then obviously there's more e-bikes riding around in our city, which is something that I like because that's just going to only improve the infrastructure and awareness uh, and things like that. So that's what we do with the bikes. Um, and then obviously when new models come out that we, for instance, if Rad announces a new bike, we'll maybe show the old model in the video and then I'll go ahead and sell the, um, the, the current, sell the old model and compare it to the new model in the, the walk around footage. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I've done. Pretty fortunate to have some storage space and otherwise, uh, to be honest, the majority of them would be uh, sold. And just because I personally don't have a, a lot of storage for, uh, for bikes, I mean, you know, not really a significant, you know, it's a good problem to have, but even disposing of all the, uh, you know, the cardboard and everything is uh, a bit of a task. And so uh, it's something that I have to, every two weeks when our, um, our uh, recycling gets picked up, I have to cut all these boxes down in small pieces and, and try to recycle as much as I can. So And it's, it has been interesting too, seeing some of the, like, I feel like this bike is extremely well protected, but then obviously you have a lot more um, trash. All right, I'm trying to see if I can get these handlebars, see if there's any other comments. I think the bike is sitting just fine. All right. Uh, I wish I lived near you so I could buy some of these bikes you review and don't have uh, any need. Uh, I'm not sure what emoji that is. Oh. You got this. I see. So, yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's nice because a lot of these bikes, obviously, they're direct to consumer. And if you've never ridden any of the brands before, you don't know um, someone that owns one. It's a challenge because, uh, you know, you're kind of watching, making a decision purely based off of, for instance, our reviews and things like that. So um, what is nice is these folks can get a great deal on an electric bike and um, actually ride it and, and, and uh, have a nice test ride. So, all right, I think um, just trying to figure out what I want to do first here. I think I might actually throw on the handlebars. The bike kind of wants to sit here nicely. Uh, I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the, the paint job. It's kind of a glossy, pearly white and you probably can't see it in the video, but it's a zebra at the top and has kind of a zebra stripes. It actually looks really sharp, uh, in my opinion. Again, this is their more premium bike compared to their uh, Hemiway Cruiser. And they have the Big Dog and the Cobra and the Cobra Pro. Now their Big Dog has 20 by 4 inch tires, so a bit of a smaller bike. Flip these around. I should also note I am not a mechanic. This isn't a tutorial. Really, again, really the reason that I do these is uh, to help folks out uh, with any questions. All right, so the first step is going to be removing the stem plate. And I too get some comments from people saying that these videos aren't very exciting, but uh, the reality is they're not really meant to be very exciting. It's I have to assemble them anyway, and we just get so many questions on all of our videos that it's really impossible to uh, respond to them. So this is uh, the opportunity that I give folks. Again, there's a link in the description to Hemiway's website if you are looking to purchase any of their models. That really helps us make videos like this. And we are finally getting down to three-ish, maybe four bikes 
left to review, including the zebra here. I think it's the the Rad Runner Plus, the Zebra, the KBO, the Rattan. Once we get that battery in, and then the Watt Wagon, the uh, seven thousand dollar carbon fiber bike. And we did some riding last week, and that bike hits forty miles an hour. It is the, I mean, it's it just. It feels like nothing else I've experienced on an electric bike, 2,300 watts of peak power. And uh, yeah, it just pulls so hard. In fact, so it's a mid-drive bike. And when you, when you put it in its, I'll call it the 10th pedal assist. And if you have it in a low gear and you just hit the throttle, literally the front tire will come up and like the bike will come up from under you. So you need to be very careful with the bike like that. And uh, I think that's most of the models that we have left to review. And so if you have any ideas, you can let us know in the, the comment section below, or if you're watching this live, happy to take your suggestions in the little chat box. And I've been reaching out to a few different companies to see if we can get some new brands that I've always wanted to review. these four bolts in. So it's a 750 watt motor, 86 Newton meters of torque. And I think it's a 22 amp controller, which means it likely peaks at just over a thousand Watts. So I'll be very curious the performance of this bike. Uh, another notable difference with this one is obviously it has uh, hydraulic disc brakes compared to the mechanical ones. And so these are Tektro hydraulic brakes. If you've never experienced them, it's definitely a step up to mechanical disc brakes. Not that there's anything wrong uh, per se with the uh, mechanical disc brakes. They, they perform fine, but these just feel a little bit better, easier to push, or press with your hands and... Uh, and usually that's what you can expect on some of these bikes as you get closer to the uh, $2,000 price point. Hydraulic disc brakes and some of the nicer components though. We do have the uh, Shimano Sys Index shifter here, which is the seven speed shifter that we see on many electric bikes uh, at various price points really. There's a handful of companies that will opt for something a little bit nicer. Gets the job done, but it's certainly a entry level part from Shimano, though obviously like that they're using a name brand. And in the rear, we have a Shimano Altus shifter. I think that's one step up from the super entry level uh, components from um, Shimano. All right, I'll see if I can see if there's anything. No, do you have a favorite? pannier bag that you can recommend. I want to get a couple so I don't have to take all my stuff in a backpack. Um, gosh, what is the, so I do, I think you can get away with something more affordable than this, but we have been using the two, uh, two wheel gear pannier bag that doubles as a backpack. Um, so that's kind of nice because you can hang it on the panniers and then you can bring it with you as you would like a normal backpack. I don't remember the price. I want to say they're pretty pricey, well over $100. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I would get something that's likely waterproof. Um, there's some decent options on Amazon that aren't necessarily name brands. Uh, you can also buy like the Topic ones. We have the, um, the what are they, the DX bags. I forget what the actual model number is. Uh, those are fairly decent. Um, as well. I guess it just kind of depends what price point you're at and what quality um, you want. But um, the, the I think the, the biggest thing is depending on your bike, trying to make sure that they're actually going to fit nicely. Uh, you can see here on the Hemiway here, we have a really long pannier kind of holder hanger here. And so I believe you were the one, yeah, you said that you bought the electric XP. So my recommendation to you would be 
uh, to check out the Facebook group and um, the electric owners group. There's actually, I think, three of them at this point. And just search in there for panniers and get, first of all, get people's opinions on the actual ones from electric. They haven't sent me those, so I can't speak to the quality of them. Uh, but then there should be some other Amazon uh, ones, depending on how much you want to uh, spend. Uh, why does it look like a mid-drive? Good question. I've seen this a few different times. And obviously, I'm not 100% sure because I'm just opening the bike now. But uh, on the other side, there's going to be some bolts here. And if I... If I would have to guess, there's actually the controller is located in there, which is actually really nice for maintenance wise. Say perhaps you do get a bike that happens to have an issue and you need to mess with the controller. Well, it's nice. It's it's down there in that center and there's probably some room to, to work with. Whereas if it's really tucked into the frame, you might have some, um, some more issues. So that would be my assumption. And that is, I don't know if that's why they do it or if it just makes for a stronger frame. I do think it, you know, it looks certainly um, uh, nice. So, and it could also relate to the geometry depending um, as well. All right, I think what I'm gonna try to do is get this uh, front wheel on. See if I can make some room here. This Hemiway rack is just, it, again, I'll point it on the video, but it's just, I mean, it's, it's almost the width of my entire hand. I can't even like reach around it. It's a huge rack. They got the wood uh, plate on there, much like they did on their uh, Hemiway Cruiser. Let's see if I can slide this and keep the foam in there to maybe help stabilize the bike. All right, so the trick is with these hydraulic brakes, and I think I am still gonna wait to put on the, the fender um, but usually you'll find a spacer in the middle of the uh, calipers for the hydraulic brakes. Now they put that in there um, to keep them apart. Uh, so now you definitely don't want to press the uh, front brake lever because that could potentially bring those in there in the, the pads together. And then it can be kind of difficult to kind of wedge them uh, back out. So just be careful with the front brake just generally on, on bikes um, that have hydraulic brakes. They have this kind of, this huge kind of protector down here. So I'm kind of curious how this comes out. There we go. Got one side out. Again, it's kind of an awkward uh, spot to pick the bike up from the front here with all the weight, obviously, um, elsewhere. So they have this big block that was holding the the fork in place and now i'll try to put on the uh the rotor here so we have 180 millimeter rotors and uh, they are tectrio uh, branded as well so tectrio hydraulic disc brakes with matching rotors Let's see if i can oh and actually i forgot my quick release important part. All right. So technically the lever can go on either side, but Matt, our friend at All About Bikes, who has assembled a bunch of models, if you've seen any of those videos, he recommends putting it on the opposite side just because then your hands are away from your rotors. You actually want to try not to touch your rotors. And of course you can slice your, your hand on them as well. I think, uh, what I might do is take this little foam piece out so I can roll the bike forward a little bit easier. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Again, I didn't tighten the handlebars all the way. I don't know. Maybe someone can post the weight of this bike. I want to guess it's probably 80 some pounds. Maybe mid 70s, but I would think it's probably 80s. All right, well, I'll just go ahead and tighten this up. Someone actually recently commented on one of our assembly videos that uh, the assembly video convinced him that uh, 
you should take his electric bike to a bike shop and have them uh, assemble it. So nothing wrong with that, of course. I could have put the kickstand down, but all right, get that on there. And of course, I always double check everything after I assemble it anyway. So, all right, put the kickstand down. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. And actually, I'm not 100% sure. I don't believe I saw a 15 mil wrench, so I actually have one handy here. We'll go install the pedals. All right, let's see here. Favorite e-bike around $1,000. I want to commute and do very light off-roading. Thank you. It says SH. Ah, okay, so we did a video probably a month, month and a half ago, and we did a video on our top affordable e-bikes and to be honest, that video is all the bikes that I'd recommend. So you should check that out. Um, there are a handful of bikes slightly over $1,000. If you really want to stick to the $1,000 price point, you're kind of looking at the electric XP 2.0. Maybe the, um, you could also look at the electric light, which we recently posted our review. That's at $7.99. And then you could also consider the Aerial Rider Rideal. I believe it's still out of stock. You can check their website. That is priced at $8.99. They launched it at uh, $1,000, I believe. And to be honest, it's an incredible bike if you're looking for something that still has a lot of power, uh, still has a decent battery capacity. It's actually really surprising that that bike is still priced that way. Uh, but again, it's out of stock. And if the, you do decide to purchase one, uh, if you check out the links in the description, there's a link to Aerial Rider, and that helps us out as well. Um, we actually sold our Rideal recently, uh, but I still do think it's a great bike, especially for someone who doesn't want a, you know, like a folding bike or want something a little bit uh, more familiar in a... Uh, like more familiar to just a regular non-electric bike frame wise. Um, so that's what I would consider. And then you have the Ride One Up Core 5. I believe that's still maybe on sale. Again, you can check out the link in the description to Ride One Up's website. That bike is at 1045. Also think that is a really good deal from a company that I've reviewed almost all of their electric bikes now uh, at this point. And then of course you have the Rad Power Bikes Rad Mission. A little bit higher at eleven ninety nine, and then I think there's a couple more bikes if you're getting up into that range that you could consider um, as well. But again, we've reviewed all those electric bikes, so you can watch that video on all of those bikes, and then watch the specific review if you'd like. All right, got the pedals on. Just keep in mind the left one is going to be reverse threaded. All right, um, let's see here. Hi, Fish. Uh, how much weight does this bike hold? 400 pounds, according to Ramza. The benefit of the non-step through is that it acts as a handle to lift the bike. Yep, good point. 80 pounds with the battery. Yeah, it's a huge, very heavy bike, I can tell. I've been considering buying a Zugo, but I might look into this one now. Zugo, I've actually been in touch with them trying to review one of their bikes. Um, we were in contact about a month ago and still waiting to get a response from them. Uh, for potentially reviewing one of their models. Uh, do I recommend, I do you recommend I get a suspension seat post for my e-bike? Absolutely. Um, my personal perspective would be see how you feel if you don't already own it. Uh, but if you want more comfort, suspension seat post. And then what I would do is look at a more comfortable seat as well. The suspension seat post, uh, as you'll see in our video launching likely tomorrow on the Ufree, it actually comes with the suspension seat post and a nice one. The Ufree, or, uh, the Ufree City Robin comes with an SR Sun Tour NCX suspension seat post, which is a hundred dollar plus component. And so it's nice that it just comes on the bike. You don't need to worry about what size to get. Uh, that's what I recommend. Check out our electric bike accessories list. There's a few more options, uh, but that, in my opinion, is the best option. That's the one thing about e-bikes that absolutely 
Stinks is when you run out of battery pedaling bike that weighs 60, 80 pounds and generally has a pretty short crank. Absolutely sucks. Uh, com yeah. I mean, you don't really want to run out of battery. Usually you can pedal at eight to 10 miles per hour, depending on the bike on flat ground, but hills are just almost impossible. Uh, that happened to me Monday, ran out of battery because I was testing it. Not fun going uphill. Yeah. So it's a good, uh, maybe have a charger at work and, uh, at home. Um, so Pedro says, I prefer a lighter bike, more agile. If I run out of battery, you can still pedal at home. Yes. Good, good point. Um, and for instance, on the electric light, you can just buy a second battery. Uh, they're like 250 bucks. So that's an option as well. I made it a mile from home on my first long ride. And that last mile was absolute torture. Well, I hope that doesn't have to happen to you again, because it's no fun pedaling an electric bike, um, with no assist. Though I have to imagine with 20 amp hours, as long as you keep the battery charged, you know, I forget what the stat is, but they usually say like the average trip uh, from your house is, I'm uh, driving trip, I guess, is like eight, nine, 10 miles or something like that. And virtually any e-bike can actually uh, make it, you know, at least that far. So unless you're going on a big adventure. So it looks like the rear rack is actually disconnected here. I, when they just want a little bit of wiggle room. So we'll go ahead and take these bolts off and attach that down here. And it bolts right to the frame, which I like. You can see like with this frame, I mean, we talked about the weight, but they have this additional piece here just to keep the frame nice and sturdy with the step through. And uh, that's certainly going to add to the weight. But usually with an e-bike, I mean, there's certainly people that struggle with the added weight, understandably. But once you kind of get going and comfortable with it, most people are okay. Though I think there is definitely a market for the lighter electric bikes. like the uh, reflective sidewalls on the tires and I think, uh, I'm not sure what brand are these Kenda tires. Yeah. Kenda tires definitely have some tread on them. So this bike is certainly going to be capable uh, off road. So basically you get bigger battery, supposedly more powerful motor. We might have to test that out than their cruiser hydraulic disc brakes integrated more integrated battery obviously in the bottom of the down tube i actually might try to get a lot of the filming done on this bike over the weekend Let's see how it goes of course keep in mind how many hours it's going to take to uh charge up that 20 amp hour battery It's interesting that they don't include the derailleur guard on there. I probably won't attach it. Just, I don't know. I guess it is a nice thing to have, but not absolutely necessary. All right. Now, uh, Hemiway, obviously, you know, they've sold a lot, a lot of fat tire electric bikes. And so, there are a lot of customers out there. The one thing I don't know a whole lot about is their customer service. So if you own one and you've had to deal with their customer service, maybe uh, let me know in the comments section. I would love to hear and kind of compile uh, the general gist of, of how their customer service is. Because I think that's something that is extremely important when you're purchasing an electric bike. And I'm gonna encourage people to do that when I do my full review on this bike as well. Just trying to make sure this rack feels like it's, uh, there isn't a lot of tolerance as far as, uh, like I can't pull it really far. And I just wanted to make sure that these screws aren't going in. What do you think? I 
want to make sure they're not going to be cross-threaded here. So maybe I'll see if I can get this one in first. Let's try this again here. Now there is a little bit of wiggle room now that I have down below. So let's try this now. That's going in straight. Just wouldn't be any good to ruin your threads. I think this one's going in. So we get the one in and then again if you have any other questions about bikes, feel free to let me know. I'll check them just in a second. I just want to get this rack started here. This is where that ratchet uh, is really coming in handy, making this a lot easier. All right, now let's see if we can start the other one. A tool I highly recommend for sure. Comes with everything that you need. Right, let's try this now. Fat tire bikes, of course, have been uh, very popular, continue to be popular. I know there's some people, I get some comments every once in a while that say they just simply don't understand why people like fat tire bikes, but I have to say they are a lot of fun. And if you need something that can kind of go anywhere, it is it is a good option. Perfect. So those matched up just fine. And before I forget, I'm just going to tighten the rear rack on the other side. So overall build quality, I'm pretty impressed so far. Again, not a ton of experience with Kimi Way as a company, but I am excited to review their bikes just because they are so popular. It's a brand that you simply can't can't ignore or a lot of owners around. All right, see that? So I would personally recommend making sure one of these are loose before you assemble it, but or before you kind of put the, the front bolts in, that'll give you some room. And their motors actually, it's gonna be, you're not gonna be able to see it on the live, uh, but when I do the review of this bike, the motor is, I don't know if it's because the dropouts are so far away. It's definitely a different type of motor that I haven't seen before. So I'm not sure if this is something they designed in house, uh, but the motor looks you know, a lot different from any other motor I've personally seen. All right, let's see here. Okay, I prefer, okay, I made it. Uh, what is your favorite e-bike? All right, I have to go with a cargo e-bike because that's really what started it all. So we first bought a 2018 Rad Wagon. My wife and I rode that around our city uh, where we live, and that's how I got into e-bikes. And we still have a, a Rad Wagon, a new one. So if we can only have one bike, we the, the cargo bikes are just so versatile. I know they're not the fastest. Um, but we bring our kids along with us and I, we get groceries on them and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I really like the cargo bikes that would have to be my, my favorite. What e-bikes do you recommend for a heavy rider? 250 pounds. My friend wants to get in it, but the weight limits are an issue. Oh man. So this is a question that I feel like I've answered a few different times on some comments. 
most bikes I feel like are some of the, like the frames that are more sturdy do have a 250 pound uh, capacity. I guess it depends how, uh, how much your friend actually weighs. I want to say some of the bike tricks models had higher weight capacities. I think you mentioned this one as well has a higher weight capacity. Um, Jordan suggests a Rambo rooster and my electric XP two and birth and both work perfectly. So, uh, there's some other options as well. Um, I want to say, uh, V volt talks a little bit more about weight limits and they might be able to, um, I can't remember. I I'm pretty sure when I went to their website, they had something about for heavier riders contact us and they, they, they would work as well. Um, so definitely some, something that's looks overbuilt, such as like the Hemiways. Um, but I don't have any really specific recommendations. I would like look at bike tricks. I feel like you should be able to find something in the 250 pound range. Hopefully that was helpful, but if others have suggestions, I'm, I'm open to them. Um, Instead of using one large battery, they should fit two 10 amp hour batteries that can work together and also save time on charging. Yeah, they could. Uh, but I, I mean, on this bike, I don't know where you would personally put uh, the second battery. I mean, on the electric X premium, they have it behind the seat post. Uh, keep in mind, I mean, even with that bike, they're not a, including two chargers, but I do agree. I mean, you'd be able to charge it up a lot faster. Uh, but it does add complexity, obviously, with additional wiring and things like that. So uh, just something to, to keep in mind. What do you recommend for a 1,700-ish budget for someone who's around 300 pounds? Oh, these weight limits are are killing me because I feel like I should have uh, – I need to do an article on this and, and be able to share a little bit more. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure, but in that price range, I would – I'm not sure what the weight limits are on the Ride One Up bikes. Uh, that's in that price range. Um, I'm trying to think what else there might be, um, but that might uh, 300. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to. Uh, if you send me an email, maybe I can do some more uh, uh, reading on that. Just Ryan at ebikeescape.com. If I have any more suggestions, I can get back to you on that. But we'll we'll try to do an article on that. Do you have a bike lock that you prefer? I was thinking about getting a kryptonite lock. Uh, yes. Uh, if you don't mind the additional weight, go with the Kryptonite uh, Evo Evolution lock. It's the 1040, I think. It's around 100 bucks, and it's pretty good security for the price. It's not as sturdy as their Kryptonite New York City line, um, but it, it does provide some security, obviously, depending on where you live. But I, I do use that lock a lot, and um, I do like it. If you live in an area where theft is not as much of an issue. They do have a combo version. We've been using that for um, around our city. We don't really have too many issues with uh, bike theft. And that's been just handy because, you know, it's just another key to have to remember. So you don't need to do it. Um, so that that's the lock. If you want something folding, just go with the name brand. If you want something that uh, mounts to the water bottle cages. I also like the Abus locks um, and things like that. Have you heard of an e-bike company called GeForce. Yes, I believe I have heard of them. I don't can't speak anymore to them uh, though. The Rambo Rooster is the same frame as the Rad Runner. Good to know. Does one charger on the X Premium charge both batteries at the same time? No, it does not. One charger. Uh, they would include one charger and you have to charge one and then charge the next one. They actually accidentally sent me two because they thought they might be including two, but it's only one. I was suggesting an e-bike because they can get exercise and ease into biking. Definitely a good market to target. Yes, I completely agree. It's it's great for people to be able to get out there and they kind of can overcome the hurdle of just not being able to, you know, just helps them get their legs moving, get started, and then they can work up to pedaling a little bit more as they go. Uh, wouldn't a cargo bike take more on more weight? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point for sure. Um, so, yeah, the Rad Wagon, I think, is – weight capacity on the rad wagon. I'm not hundred percent sure, but that is a good option. What are your thoughts on the lock called kryptonite, New York? Forget about it. Yeah. So yeah, we have that lock. It's, I mean, it's, I think the highest end you can get from, uh, from kryptonite and it is a good option. Just keep in mind, it's extremely, it's extremely heavy. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I didn't misplace. There they go. 
Um, so yeah, the, the forget about it lock. If you want maximum security, uh, that's what you should go with, 100%. Um, but if you want to save a little bit of money, go with the you know that 1041. It should be on our electric bike accessories list. If it's not, uh, we should for sure add it. All right, I'm going to see what how this light works. It looks like. Let's see. I think I can just go straight on here. Okay. I'm actually not sure. I think yeah. I'm pretty sure I need a small uh, wrench for this. I might not be able to get it completely attached here, but we'll get it started at least. And I, th I think their little multi-tool, it does have one, but it might be kind of tricky to get in there. So, Yeah, most of the time with bike locks, you kind of get what you pay for. Uh, name brands, Abus, Kryptonite. Uh, also the foldy lock ones are fairly decent, I think, in my opinion. Uh, just keep in mind, I mean, if you really want to do a deep dive into uh, locks, we did a interview series with someone from Kryptonite, and uh, it was good to get his perspective. But there's really, I mean, if you watch, if you watch uh, any YouTube videos that, that the lock picking lawyer does, I mean, any any lock can be defeated. Obviously, he's a very skilled, but uh, it's just kind of about being the, the uh, trying not to be the easiest target, especially with the e-bikes. This is actually pretty tight to get this uh, on here though. Just trying to get this hand around here. Actually, might I don't know if I might not be able to get that washer on there as well. We'll try it here. Again, I always can uh, help if you have someone helping you assemble your electric bike or at least hold something. Let's see, why isn't this going all the way through? You just don't leave a ton of threads on this. I'm sure it can be done. And then once this is attached, I'll try to pull out the battery and just show you how big it is and maybe even try to turn on the bike. Not sure if I really need that big washer. But... They do have some mounts on the side here as well, so I'm going to assume that they have a front rack for this bike as well. Not sure what the additional cost of that would be, but. All right, now that I got it started, it's going to be much easier. And maybe I will, I'll try to see if I can get this, but let's see what size this is. It's the bigger size. Maybe it won't be so bad. All right, now size is a five. This, this front light looks uh, like it'll be pretty bright. I'll be curious to see. All right, and before I get that completely tight, I'm actually going to attach the side. like at least one of these got slightly bent in from shipping or maybe they're supposed to be that way and yeah, no, I got bent a little bit all 
But uh, for the box being pretty banged up, not seeing too much damage except for this little piece slightly bent, which is no big deal. You can just bend it back. But I'll probably come back to these and really get them tightened down after, but making progress at least. So I have a pretty good idea of how these brakes are going to feel because I think these are the same textural brakes I've seen on many electric bikes. And assembly fairly, very standard actually for, uh, it's going to be easier if I get on the other side for uh, what I personally have experienced on other electric bikes. I'll maybe try to stand over the bike as well. All right, so let's see, let's get these handlebars straightened out, tightened down. So I kind of just made them loose for now. And you want to line up the lines here. Looks like they got to go a little bit this way. All right. Looks pretty good. And I think a little further up. That feels about right. I have the wrong size on here. Must be a four. A little bit difficult to see the uh, center, to be honest, but. Try this again. All right, pretty upright riding position on this step through bike. And this is something that you definitely want to torque down to their recommended spec. So I can slide the display just a little bit out of the way. Does come with a bell. And I will check the comments in just a second. Cable wrapping, they have some Velcro straps up here. In my opinion, it would be nice to have uh, them wrapped a little bit nicer, but right hand twist grip throttle. All right, let's see. Tightening these down quick. And really happy to have the ratchet wrench for these. These seem like they took a lot to tighten down. All right, I think that's good. Get the display back up, and I'm just gonna push on the front suspension. Yeah, definitely gonna add some comfort. Still got that fender a little bit loose, and that light needs to be up a little bit, but we can go ahead and plug it in. Just line up those arrows. 
All right. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm really... How heavy is it? Oh, uh, the kryptonite lock. Gosh, I want to say probably 10-ish pounds, maybe even heavier than that. Um, not entirely sure. Maybe uh, Google search that and you'll be able to figure out a more accurate number, but it, it's very heavy duty. Pedro says Radwagon has a 350 pound capacity. Thanks for sharing that. Those bikes have... Have you reviewed these bikes next month? I'm getting the CVT belt drive by them. Steven, that's awesome. I'm I, So I think Dose Bikes does have a really interesting offering. I talked with Sam probably two plus years ago, right when I started eBike Escape. And I've tried to get in back, back in touch with them to try to do a review uh, because I think they are doing some interesting things. And obviously I saw the CVT belt drive that they are now adding. So I hope you enjoy that bike. Let me know what you think of that. Uh, lots of bikes have rear wheels that are sometimes impossible to remove due to the power cable, making it impossible to fix a puncture or change tire without cutting the cables. So a, a fair amount of them have the motor cutoffs. Uh, and I'm just trying to look here. Where is the motor cable on this particular bike. It's actually on the left side and there is a quick release there. And that's really common. I'm actually surprised that um, you found that there's some bikes that don't have that. That's a bit surprising uh, to be honest. Um, you've seen videos where he breaks into bike locks. Yeah. Don't most motors have quick connect? Yes, they do. I use two New York kryptonite locks, one chain and one U lock. They're awesome, heavy, Heavy, though, with an e-bike easier to manage. Yeah, especially if you have a rear rack. Um, there are many that don't. Okay. Uh, this bike has quick connections. Yes, it's mostly ones with rear hub motors. I took the back tire to test it. It's straightforward. Uh, you will have to cut a couple of zip ties, though. It's hardwired into the controller at the manufacturer's. Nash Bar has good panniers. Interesting. Thanks for uh, sharing that. Let's ride. I actually bought a bike a number of years ago from Nash Bar. So it's good to uh, know that they have panniers. Um, we'll let you know how I feel about the Dose CVT. Great. Super curious about that. Uh, do don't motor cutoffs go into the controller? Yes. From the brakes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and power the bike on because uh, I'm just curious. All right. So they have a kind of monochrome display here. Very simple, but uh, looks like it's pretty easy to read. Let's go ahead and turn that light on. Oh yeah, fairly bright. And in the rear, probably not gonna be able to see it. Yeah, probably, but it does flash when you hit the brake lights. The brakes, sorry. So that's cool, I like that. I think that's really smart. Uh, obviously I'll check it out to see how that performs. Uh, you know, it's a little darker in here actually, and it does seem very bright, but obviously I'll test that out in the, the daylight and, uh, see how that rear light performs. So that's cool. Uh, bottle cage mount right here. Again, I talked about some of the branding looks really nice. And I think kind of to finish up this build, I have to, uh, just get these fenders all aligned and tightened up. I can remove the battery if that is of interest. I'll do that during my full review as well. But let me just go ahead and, yeah, I'll just cut the keys off here. There's a time here. That's the other challenge I have is keeping the uh, keys straight for these bikes. I do have labels, but it's just easier to misplace them. All right. Let's see, turn the bike off. Odometer says 0.2 miles. All right, so there's a key on keyhole on the left side of the bike. And I'm assuming turn left. And as per usual, there's a little uh, um, lever here. I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but uh, if you move that, then the, the battery is going to fall out of the bottom here. 
And it takes a little bit of practice to get these uh, batteries out, especially this giant 20 amp hour battery. Just trying to see, actually. It just seems, uh, let's see, there we go. So the bottom does come loose. That's a little bit of a tight fit, to be honest, but man, this battery is huge, huge battery. I mean, I'm sure they had to do this frame custom just to fit the battery in, but yep, 48 volt, 20 amp hour, almost a kilowatt of power. 960 watt hours. All right, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure if it's easier with the, probably is easier with the tire kind of turned that way. Let's see if I can get the bottom in first. There we go. Not too bad. And then I always make sure with these batteries that come on the bottom of the down tube, obviously make sure the key is already always turned and locked depending on the bike. And then I always hit the lever and give it a good tug and make sure that battery is not going to pop out because the battery is such an expensive component of these e-bikes uh, to replace. And obviously we don't want batteries falling out when we're riding. There is a port on the left side to charge the bike. Um, so yeah, overall, kind of what I expected. I think it looks nicer uh, aesthetic wise uh, with this nice white color. Actually, pretty big fan of that. And the rack is just massive as I was talking about. And kind of a cool frame design here. They don't have a uh, protector here, at least that I can see. So. My recommendation would be go to our accessories list and buy some of the 3M tape that we have listed and you can keep your uh, frame nice from any chain slap. Uh, I certainly do that on some of our e-bikes that don't include that, but not a huge deal. Uh, nice inter integrated uh, cables here all coming in on the right side of the bike and obviously going into the down tube area. And actually these cables kind of just come out on the the rear here. So it just a, sometimes you'll see like a huge, uh, kind of a huge gap underneath the frame here, but these cables are actually, there's just a small hole where they kind of all come out. So I actually like that as well. Just a, a small thing, obviously. Um, and the motor cable again on the left side. And I think it comes, yeah, it comes in between the frame and the actual disc rotor, uh, which is something I've uh, been seeing uh, more often on e-bikes with the, the cable coming in on the other side to protect you a little bit more. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to give you guys another minute. Ha again, happy to answer any other questions. I'm going to read through these ones. Again, there will be a link in the description uh, to Bike Tricks, or Bike Tricks. I was reading a Bike Tricks comment to Hemiway's website. And if you're looking to make a purchase, that really helps us out. So I uh, appreciate that. Uh, all right. Have you reviewed any bike tricks? Steven, I actually got in touch with bike tricks today. Uh, you have the ultra beast too. I might actually have to look that one up quick. Um, not sure I was familiar with that actual, that actual model. Uh, so I got in touch with bike tricks today. They are going to, Oh, the juggernaut ultra beast too. I see. Um, they're going to get back to me on whether uh, they want us to do a review. So this is the Bafang M620 mid-drive motor, inverted front suspension, dual battery. Uh, it looks like an awesome bike. It actually has the same controls as the Zebra, the throttle, or the not the throttle, but the, the control pad. 4.8 inch fat tires. If you thought these were fat, uh, those are extremely wide. So yeah, I, I wanna review the Bike Tricks bikes and uh, trying to make that happen. Frame looks super beefy. Looks like a really fun bike. All right, uh, let's see. Just visited a Hemiway dealer today. Interesting. Uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing, where is that? Uh, they had the non-step through Zebra and the Big Dog. Was interested in the Big Dog, but they don't sell it with the long rack yet. Okay, interesting. Um, I was going to look up the Big Dog because I wasn't familiar with the long rack. Okay, now I see it. Cool. Yeah, it's more of a, that's definitely a bike that's still going to be heavy, but it has the dual kickstand and uh, going to be a little bit more accessible for shorter riders, um, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, that long rack. That looks really cool. I like that a lot. I like the cargo capability uh, bikes for sure. Uh, check out Fido bikes for rear, rear wheel removal. Or Fido, I, th I think it's Fido. Um, 
yeah, and we're, you know, they reached out to and wanted us to do a review. That's, that's a bike. Uh, some of their folding models are lighter and stuff. So we might be interested in that. I'm trying to do food delivery with my e-bike and wanted to tie down a storage bag to my rear rack and wanted to know if some buckle straps would be sufficient. Any recommendations? Um, let's see. I think, yeah, I think uh, buckle straps would be good as long as you can cinch them down um, and just make sure they're tight enough. Of course, there's, you know, you just want to, depending on what bike you're riding, you might want to have it and, you know, it might be worth per purchasing like a, a rear basket or something like that and putting the bag in it and then strapping the bag to the rear rack, which is then bolted to the frame. Um, we've used, um, you know, just general, um, I mean, some people use zip ties and things like that. That can work if you use enough of them, depending on stability and what you're actually mounting. Uh, bungee cords can work, though sometimes they can be a bit finicky to make sure it's actually really, you know, holding it down. Um, or you can build your own for $600. Uh, though regular bike frames really aren't meant to take the use of e-bikes. Look at NRS straps. There you go. Jordan helped you out. So that could be a good option as well. Yeah, I don't have a ton of experience uh, with that. And uh, Ramza says bungee cords work well. All right. Uh, well, I... Thank you all for joining uh, me tonight. I had a pretty good uh, showing. And uh, again, Hemiway's website in the link in the description. If you click that before you make a purchase, also check out our electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page. And finally, our electric bike discounts code page. And speaking of discounts, there's a lot of companies that are running um, Father's Day sales. So we started to add some of those. Also, if you aren't already a member of our newsletter, if you go to ebikeescape.com, you'll eventually get a pop-up, which will allow you to join our email newsletter. And we share deals. We share all the videos that we're re recently working on. We kind of give you a little inside scoop into new bikes that we're reviewing and things like that. Um, so hopefully that, uh, um, that is helpful. And we send an email just twice a month and uh, yeah, share everything ebikes. All right, the NRS straps are rafting straps. All right, the Electric 2.0 or Engui. I haven't reviewed an Engui. They've reached out, just haven't gotten around to it. Personally, I think Electric is a bigger brand, but uh, I'm sure the other people feel uh, the other way. And uh, I guess I'm a little bit more biased to, uh, to Electric given how many happy customers they have. And I've heard really good things about their customer support. All right. Thanks everyone for joining me and we'll see you in the next video, new video dropping likely tomorrow. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.